Greetings. Welcome to Warrior Class. With the teachers with that. And you will too if you pass. All this right. Welcome, family. Where y'all Greetings. at? <laughs> greetings, greetings, greetings. Where we at? Said, yeah, where we at? <laughs> Here we go. As we yeah. zoom in. All right. Look at your big screen, Bob. Your computer is so much better than mine. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Boom. All right. Oh, leave the light. Oh, okay, where we at? Oh, ooh. That's just my head. Be like, bust his head. Oh, ooh. No, so, we, yeah, all right. Uh, it won't, it's not a disaster like y'all thought. All right. Ooh. We always had that the nick of time type thing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, this episode, um, all gone. we're dealing with the stick. Is it the best weapon for self defense? Is it even viable for self defense, right? Mm -hmm. Um, very common thing, and, yeah. On um, uh, the remix morning show, Belay, on uh, the last remix morning show, uh, last Thursday, Belay did a thing on using a stick. You know, you yeah, strike your hands and everything. And um, from what I understand, people were, because I was in the chat, but I don't really pay attention to what folks in the chat saying, man, you know, uh, unless it's our chat on here, you know. So peace, everybody, by the way. Um, so I, I don't really pay, pay attention to that kind of stuff. So, um, so, uh, Somebody said something about you know stickers for old men. Right, right. Old men. I said a wise man is what I, I said. I said <laughs> well, when people say that, right, it's ignorance. Um, I didn't say stupid. I'm not insulting you. We're all ignorant of something, but you're definitely ignorant of self defense. Um, but you know, the students come to me. They may be on me for a couple of years. We haven't gotten around to using a stick, and then we use the stick. And they'll they like, I don't want to learn those things. You, you know, it's not not uh it's not just you. <laughs> this is I've heard it before, you know, uh before you said it, but the stick's not uh effective self-defense and this and that. Um well one our parents and stuff always carry the stick. Okay. But two, if you think the stick can't isn't effective in combat or self-defense or what have you. You really aren't looking outside. So don't just look at the dojo or right. look outside. So the police been whooping our ass with sticks Good point. Great. forever, <laughs> killing us. Uh, great point. Right. So you're telling me a stick's not effective. We've been taking away. We, we, we just, we, our, our bones are all rickety and, 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 and weak. So we get hit with a stick, we go down, but nobody else would, please. Right. So the stick is a devastating tool and it can take your life. But, um, police all around the world too, like even China, you know what I'm saying? All over the world they, they use a stick. Yeah. You know, uh, in India, they, they crack with the stick. People say it was because it doesn't do much damage. Police don't care about doing, they want to do a lot of damage. <laughs> okay. Stop. One thing about, in fact, the police are trained in the use of force and all over so you got green yellow and red in the use of force green is you can hit this you know to to cause pain to to control yellow is you can cause it's going to cause more lasting damage but it can control is not fatal damage red is fatal the whole body according to the police is green except for the head, which is red, the neck, which is red, the chest right here, right in the center is red, on the back, the spine is red, okay? Everything else is green. I think yellow is yellow is at the elbows and at the knees. Okay. Um, police do not ever aim for your elbows, even your elbows or knees. Or, or, or your arm, or the green, they always hit for the red. Police always hitting us in our heads. Okay. Because, so they don't care about 
this tool is a is a tool that's not as dangerous right. as something else. They know how dangerous it is. Okay. And then they set it up to wield it. It has a handle on it and all that. Exactly. I mean the the, the way it's used. So a stick, the qualities of, of a stick is you strike from like about the first uh, probably like four fingers in or, or more maybe a whole hand in so from here to here that's that's where that power is going if, if you swing it here like this right you want to hit with that end in the middle it won't be as much and then you jam this the pommel so you leave a little bit you leave like a fist amount you have a stick like this and you hit with the pommel and that really is damaging yes so much so you can roll up a, a magazine right now poke your spouse or your friend or your child your child probably be crying hopefully you got an older child um or hit yourself and you'll see how much damage that can do well imagine a stick well this is a rattan stick um and it's used like in the screamer from the philippines uh they were trained with this because it's light and if you hit somebody in the head it will hurt, but it may break, not break their skull. Uh, in the military, in the army, armies, of, I mean, in the uh, police around the world, they use hardwood sticks that are heavy and will destroy your skull, okay, and they are not going to break. So just know that with their different sticks, you can get yourself, you know, a stick like this to, to train with and, and, and things. And you can do damage with it, but get yourself a, a, a thicker stick if you want to, you know, use that and carry that for protection. Um, and the only reason is we aim, I, we'll, we'll deal with that, but if it breaks, you don't want your stick to break. You want to continue to, be able to use it. I mean, you may hit a person somewhere and the stick breaks and their arm breaks. Okay, well, you broke their arm, but now if somebody else is there or if they keep going because they are on drugs or whatever, you got a problem. So make sure you got a heavier, thicker stick. Just don't have it so thick and heavy you can't wield it with some speed. Okay. Um, I was, I was definitely, excuse me. Bro. No, go ahead. I was just saying, I was definitely one of the people who was like, man, I don't want to learn no stick. We done came from knives and swords and double swords and all that stuff. I don't want to do no stick. But then when I started learning it, it became one of my favorite things, uh, favorite uh, phases because of how, how, de how deceptive it is. It's very deceptive and really hard to know where you're coming from with it. And it's, it's, it's simple to use. I'm not going to say it's so easy to learn, but it's simple to use and very, very, very effective. Especially, like I said, you got a heavy stick. It does it do a lot of damage, a lot of damage. And it's um, depending on what type of damage you want to do to somebody in the outcome, you're not leaving any blood or anything like that. So, you know, some you may even have a, some type of phobia to blood or whatever or something, that, that situation. But... um. A, a stick will do a lot of damage, so it really changed my mind about how I want to uh, how I want to go about my training and adding that to the to the arsenal definitely. Now, do we have any news? I do. I have one bit of news. It's local news too. I'm gonna. I don't even have to go to this. I can tell you about it. So there was an altercation at a local Dunkin' Donuts where, and it's a lesson in this, where a uh, police officer and a dude was arguing of course there's a black man and so they get into this argument and i don't know if y'all had this happen to me i've had this happen where um i get to something with the police i didn't know he was police or even maybe i did know he was a police but he was harassing me and stuff and i met in my younger days said i tell you what why don't you take that badge and that gun off and let's see how bad you is so that type of uh incident is what they is what happened at the Dunkin' Donuts. This police officer challenged this guy. The guy said, "Well, 
if you take that badge and gun off, we'll see. So the police officer took his badge and gun off, went outside and got his ass whooped. So the dude beat him down, right? Everybody, yeah, go black man. The police officer put back on his badge, tased the man, and then called the police on him. Now, I say this. Yeah, so you thinking, take the badge and gun off that they're going to be armed. Right, right. Now, they're going to just take it. But if, if, if somebody challenged, I'm just using this as a scenario. If somebody was to challenge the police, you have them take their, their gun, badge, and radio off. So they're not, so you beat their ass, they can't just immediately just call them motherfuckers on you. Excuse have my language. Hold it too. Well, he ain't gonna do that. He's gonna have nobody hold his radio. Holding the radio is like having nobody hold his gun. He's not gonna do that right. because that's his lifeline. But he put that mug with his clothes on top of it, off to the side, while y'all get down. And if you got sense, you don't knock him down where he's knocked down by his bad gun mm -hmm. and radio. You knock his ass over there, <laughs> and then you haul out. You move out, Teach it. right? Teach it. And, and by the time he crawls over, if he can crawl over to his badge and gun, you out of there. But also, you don't make – that's a fight. Uh, I don't advocate fights. A fight is both of us agree that we're going to throw hands. That's my younger days. Right, that's for children. <laughs> You're not a child, and this is a cop. Right. You don't make – so if it comes – that first of all, that's your ego. Take that gun and badge off. He may just bust your head right there. You're talking about a stick. Right. Are you threatening me? Ah. You threatening me? You're under arrest. Oh, put that gun down, sir. I don't have a gun. This is my shake. Boom. We've seen too much, too much. Right. Craziness. So don't, don't play games with the police. They're not your friend. They're not honorable. These are the police. These are our oppressors. So you don't play. That's like a slave. Massa, you <laughs> put down the whip, Massa, and I'll bust your head. He's going to beat your ass still half massa. to death. But that's the point. He's still Massa. He's still massa that's after the point I wanted to make. Whoop his ass. Whatever made him decide to be a police officer in, that, in, the, in this time and climate, you know what I'm saying, is the person that he is. That don't stop when he take the badge off. And that's what you got to think. And, like, and it don't matter his color either. No, it, de it definitely does not. So that's all the news I have today. Don't be silly. Somebody said, that too heavy for the technique he was showing. Uh, May, unless you see it. Okay, did Volumos just specify if a stick and a bat can be used in a similar way with these same tips given? No. So a bat is a, the angles are the same, but the way you use a tool, depend, it depends on the technology of the tool. When you see cops holding a bat like this, they're no longer being a cop. Right. That's being a person just trying to hurt you. Because this isn't the proper way to, and this is, but thankfully, this actually slows down. You think it's more power because it's two hands. It actually slows down. If I use it, you're going to see with one hand, the power and speed of this is devastating, but this slows it down. Because it's not made for that. The African doesn't, by the way, have swords that use two hands. We don't have big two-handed swords. Of course. Um, maybe in East Africa they did because if you see them, they're, they're, them stick fighting, their sticks are long. Right. And it's a sword analog the way they're using their stick. So maybe. But in West Africa... It's one-handed sword use, okay? Um, or you're using two swords. One is always acting as a shield while the other one is, is your sword, but the one that acts as a shield still cutting. Okay. Uh, we're going to deal with using a stick as a sword analog and using a stick as a stick. The difference between those two, and there's no preference for me. I use... I I, I change between both when I'm using a stick. Okay. The only reason I don't carry a stick just every day is it, it's not concealable. Okay. Um, that's why I have a, not just the only reason I have a lot of knives on me, but they're concealable. And I'm carrying more than one right now, right? But they're all concealed. You wouldn't know that unless I told you, right? And you still don't know where they're at. 
uh, this stick, you would know you got a stick. My student was walking with a stick. Um, he was training actually in the park. And a dude grabs his pocket, trying to go in his pocket. And he he hit that dude so hard to stick. It was thick. It was it was thick. It was a thick stick. He hit the dude so hard the stick cracked on his skull. Mm. And that was it for the dude, too. I mean, he went down. I'm not saying he expired or nothing. I'm not saying nothing about that. I'm just saying that was it. He wasn't robbing nobody else. No time soon. Right. All right. So and then my student, he's a former student. Because uh, he ain't all there, to be honest. <laughs> he pimp walked off. You bust somebody up. Don't pimp walk off like, you know, looking cool like you're in a movie or something. Break. If you can break. If you physically can run off or walk briskly. Mm -hmm. Bah! Then, you know, you're just pimping. Don't do that. Don't Get out of there. Don't ask if anybody wants some. Don't right, right. That. Anybody else wants some? Don't do that. And I've done that, you know, on, on the train down here. Uh, white man bumped my daughter. She was about eight. Yeah, she was eight. And didn't say excuse me. Big old white bubble dude, right? I said, you're not going to excuse yourself? Ah, shut up, nigga. Mm. Boom. Hit him with that headbutt. We can't, he was dazed. We got to the next stop. Threw him off. Then I'm looking at the white folks. That's on the any of y'all want something too? Oh, and, and they were hey, we're with you, buddy. <laughs> we're with I know you. that's right. Situation to do that. Man. And it, but it was crazy because they didn't have nothing to do with what he did. <laughs> but I was so mad, you know, and I couldn't just bust him up on right. public. So I hit him with that headbutt, right. toss his ass yeah, off. You know, you wasn't you finishing your mind. You I wasn't finishing right. <laughs> I had a question. Is a yeah. walking stick too long for your techniques? So, no. So, not for, well, it's not my techniques, but not for yes. African techniques. No. So, we use a walking stick. Can you grab me that? Uh, yes, and, and actually, let's stand up now since we, and we can work the techniques now. Um, there's a difference in sticks. So, I was asking about a bat. I can bring a bat too. I got bats too. Okay. Now, bat is two handed. Whoop, let me. Real quick here. Can okay, somebody put that on the okay. box thingy? And we can just really run what we're talking about from here if y'all want. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, we can go over this. I'm just saying we're running from here. I'm just, I just want to deal with this right now. So, this is a walking stick. We call that a middle staff. Okay. So, the way the middle staff works. Now, I am going to hit his head just because it's easy to see. And I'm not saying you never hit somebody's head. That There's a hierarchy of what you strike with a stick. But with the middle staff, we're using two hands. The way it's used is I slide and I also push pull. So I push with my palm that's up or the front hand. I pull with the rear hand. So it's a push, pull, but there's also a slide. That's why our, our sticks are never straight. Do not slide on a straight stick. The friction is going to tear your hand up. It should have like a slight wave to it. So it takes some of that friction off. So you push, pull, and you slide. Okay? You push, pull, and you slide so your hand goes from here to here or, or more okay okay push pull slide to build up a lot of power knocked off his hand sorry cody um so push pull slide you don't push pull slide with a stick of this lamp that wouldn't make sense first of all you don't you you can hold you do hold it in two hands at certain ends, but you don't push pull slide with this. It's too small. This will shatter with that kind of power. It's used just to strike. So that same strike that's an angle two to us. I would hit hit with that. Okay, hit that way. So the technology is different. 
the angle is the same. That's an angle too for us. But the technology of the tool, because it's longer, is different. Okay. That's why hitting them like this with two hands is whack. And it actually limits your power. Because your hip isn't as involved as it should be. It's about hit that with one uh, hand. Okay. Uh, if I use the bat. Did we do bat already before? Yeah, we did bat. The bat does use a slide because it's a longer tool. Okay. It's held. So we don't hold the bat here. We hold it with some choke so we can get that power in that. Okay. A bat is going to hit with more power than the middle staff and uh, the stick, of course. Yeah. But. The middle staff more intelligent. is more intelligent. Yes. So I'm hitting it here. I can slide and hit, you know, because the spear comes from the middle staff. And so I can use spearing techniques. I can use slashing techniques, things of that nature. Okay. So it's a little bit more intelligent than the bat. The bat is for brutal, quick, bust him up. Okay. The stick can be intelligent or Genius level in drug. Okay, and we're going to get into that. Uh, but first, we're going to deal with a little bit of, a, of the history of the stick before we get into the techniques. I want to say peace to Dr. Jared Ball. He's in yeah, the Yeah, yeah, I yeah, saw Conrad. peace, peace, Dr. Ball. How you feeling? How you feeling, sir? I think he's going to say he keep that stick with him. They, they would say this uh, old man style. He, he keeps that, right, he keeps that, and he keeps the monkey ball. Now, the monkey ball, they I may actually them, they do it. Right, but I, I may I may actually do a, a, a I saw they were clowning them. I may do a, a segment, or we may do a, a episode on flexible tools. Ah, uh, the shoulder is, is not nice. so monkey ball. Um, you you slip a sock through a, a lock and use it. Definitely, they're, they're yeah. different things. So that's that's an improvised weapon. But they have you know monkey ball is is a steel ball that's wrapped in like a uh, five fifty paracord. Mm -hmm. and, or, or rope, and you can use that. That's that's common in the Navy, actually. And Dr. Ball is in the Navy, so uh, I'm, I'm sure that's where you got introduced to it. Um, and big shout out to Word Class, I love the show. Thanks, Dr. Ball. All right, so we're gonna get into the history of the uh, of the sticks. Okay, uh, a little bit of, of, of history of the stick. Really, not history, but more. Demography, if you will. Excuse me, y'all. It's, it's my turn to go, but I don't. And Goonie, you can use mine if you want. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. In Goonie stick fighting, also known as Danga or Delala Nduku, is a martial art that evolved in South Africa. In Nguni stick fighting, each combatant is armed with two long sticks. One stick is used for attack while the other is used for defense. Nelson Mandela famously practiced Nguni stick fighting as a child. In an Nguni stick match, two opposing fighters will fight in order to establish who is the strongest or the bull. Other variations of Zulu stick fighting is practiced in countries outside South Africa. These other forms of stick fighting usually evolve in the same manner and are ingrained in the hurting way of life. To get today, Nguni stick fighting is often done as a part of a wedding ceremony, as a way for opposing warriors from each family to get to know each other. Right. I want to say something real quick about Nguni. I want to say something real quick about Nguni. Uh, the only person that I know who teaches Nguni outside of South Africa is a white dude. Ah, God, his name escapes me, but he's a Filipino, Burton Richardson. He's a Filipino stylist too. And so he does a comparison of the Filipino arts and the, the Zulu arts. Very interesting. My father sent me the videos for Nguni stick fighting years ago. And uh, I was like, okay, this, you know, this 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 is cool. 
He said, pay attention to why I sent it to you. And he sent it because I, Burton Richardson, he trained in South Africa, but they trained him with the teenagers because they didn't, they didn't deem him worthy of training with the men. And even some of those teenagers are putting it on him. Now he's a master with, with a scream, but some of those teenagers are putting it on him. Okay. He got, he was getting aggressive with one of the teenagers. And the chief came out, got in his ass real quick, mm -hmm. had Burton stumbling and bumbling, right? And then he went back into his home. <laughs> Nothing else said. <laughs> Chill out. But the one thing he he showed how you use a, a, a actual shield, which that one stick represents, and behind that shield, and I didn't know behind that shield they have five weapons, five tools. Right. And so he would say, you know, you know, often we we, we use the the, the ikwa, the short spear. He said, then we use the axe. It was that quick changing. Hmm. He said, then we use the longer spear. Then we use. I, I was like, oh my god. And that's when, you know, you're looking at Burton and you realize why they put him with the teenagers because that level of mastery, it would take him decades to get to. Mm. Okay. But I just wanted to, so in case people think, you know, they just some deuce, kick, hit the block, kick. Right, right, no, right. They're, they're, it's a complex martial art like any other. Okay. Just so you know. All right. Even when you look at the slick stick, it, you can tell that it's it's kind of intricate in the way that it's used. Kind of, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, 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 it's intricate. It, 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 it's as intricate as the person is intelligent. Right, right. So Combat intelligence is what I'm talking about. Right, right. 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 All right. Uh, Taktib. Taktib. Taktib, excuse me. Taktib is an ancient form of North African stick fighting style. It was primarily done in Egypt and was often part of the military training. The sticks were typically made of wicker or bamboo and were approximately four foot in length. Stick fighting, Kalinda, was brought to Trinidad by our African slave ancestors. Hmm? You went but to another? Stick, yeah, I went to, uh, after that, it goes there, it goes to, it goes straight from that to another one. Okay. Maybe I didn't pause in the paragraph form. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, so that was, uh, so talk. Top tib is the first one, which is like I said, was um, primarily done in Egypt, used in military training. And the second one is stick fighting is uh, Kalinda, which was brought to Trinidad by the African slave ancestors and has always been a part of Trinidad's culture, though of course it was never really approved by society. And then also called Creole wood or boy batale, boy batale boy. The tradition has endured into the modern era. So, why is the stick? Not so, why, like a lot of you saying why. <laughs> why? So, why is the stick? So, you, you probably heard him say, no boy, not, uh, no boy, no afraid, or whatever, how it goes. No boy, uh, no afraid. So, that stick man is, is not afraid. Mm. You know. Um, not talking about the dead press guy, talking and about that, the man that, with the stick. Right, not stick man from dead press. A stick man who uses stick uh, from Trinidad, incredible fighters. In fact, one is probably watching Denzel Caldwell. He's probably watching uh, right now. If so, shout out to you, and Denzel. My apologies for butchering the name. <laughs> and my apologies for butchering the name, too, because I know I ain't getting it completely right. But... Uh, yeah, if, if you want, look up to my brother, what happened? How is the family? Okay, so um, make sure you can check out No, N O, of course, Boy, B O I S, No Boy, I think it's No Boy Man, M A N, Afraid. Um, they have a couple of videos on YouTube. Grima. Grima, or S. Grima, is a martial art that was developed by Afro-Colombian communities during the colonial era, era, era excuse me, that utilizes the use of a stick and a machete in combat and traditional African sword and stick techniques. Now, as, as Grima, you probably heard as Grima, which is a Filipino. Mm -hmm. This is Grima from Colombia. 
which also so Esgrima from Philippines uses stick sword knife, and Esgrima from Colombia uses the machete stick. Now they use the machete and the stick at the same time. Sometimes. Wow. There's a if you look up Sunny Batata, B A T A T A, Sunny Batata. Uh, he does Esgrima. Uh, con machete, a screamer with machete, and uh, they they do both. You see them training with both. That's that's what we said. He's in your dominant hand and he switched back. Now they can. I'm not sure exactly how they do it, but uh, they can do either singular, like either just a stick, just a machete, or both. I think they can go between either hand. I think you know whatever they feel. So that's fantastic. Yeah. All right, um, slick stick. What we call stick fighting developed from our studies in West African uh, stick fighting that doesn't use the stick as a sword analog, as but as slick stick, where sticks are normally taught to warriors as a way of safety uh, to safely teach the sword or spear during peacetime. Slick stick uses the stick as a stick as both ends can be grabbed and used to strike in clever and unpredictable ways. And here we go. All right, so. What we're gonna do with is the slick stick. We're gonna do a bow. Okay. Because I want people to know the bow. So, if you're using a stick as a sword analog, say if you're a righty, you would put your left hand on it, on the stick all the way at the bottom, okay? And then you put your right hand on top of that now let go. Now that's the stick as a sword analog. You're holding it that way. This little bit here is the pommel, and you can use that to strike. Okay, you can strike collarbone, you can strike different parts of the body, right? And of course, you use this. So I can use this to hit. I'm gonna hit uh, Cody. Can we bring him up a little bit? Oh, oh, he's right there. Okay, Cody over me. So let me take his hand. Let me take his hands off. No, don't take his hands off. So the main place where we aim is the hand. That's number one. That's priority target. Second place is the arm. Third place, the leg. Last is collarbone. We don't really go for the head because the head is the hardest bone on the body. You said, better shut him off. Uh, I just said it's the hardest bone in the body. <laughs> so it may shut him off. It may not. It depends on where you hit him. But you don't want to be aiming like that. Well, I, I got to make sure I hit him at his temple. And, you know, hit him in, the, in his jaw right where the jaw joint is. You don't have time to do that. I didn't say hit him in his fourth meta. Uh, metacarpal, I said hit him in his hand. You're not going to get that specific. Hit him in his hand. And usually it's going to be on his thumb side, depending on how he's holding his hand, right? Uh, I want to show something with this. If he punches the way we we, we, we punch and the way we stab, because everybody, most people stab this way, you go here, boom, you catch it on these knuckles. If you punch like this, you catch it there, or if you're shorter, you would catch it on the top of your hand. Bad. And that is bad because that breaks those tiny bones right there. This is bad, At least it's hitting but it's a, it's a larger, harder bone. Okay. If I go to the inside, mm -hmm. let me see here. Inside, now that's bad. I hit a stump. Bad. Bad day. Okay. But I'm not aiming. I'm just swinging. So I may hit his wrist. Oh, that's cool too. Just tear side. that bone up too. It's, it's going to tear that bone up if you know how to strike, right? That's why the hand that includes the wrist, that's the priority. The arm is secondary because I could damage the arm. There are nerves there. I could damage his arm where he drops his, his tool, but I couldn't rely on that. Or I could hit him up into his uh, elbow. If I hit here, then I'm going to hit somewhere else on this arm. I got to kill that arm. Okay. Usually, if I hit your arm, I'm coming across to this hand here. Or if you don't have another tool in that hand, then I will hit you 
trying to hit you in your collarbone, I may catch your neck a little bit, just a little bit, okay? But this is our number one priority here because this is his delivery system. Put a knife in your hand. And like you were saying, you don't want to hit uh, in the head because I may can still grab my tool. You can still use the tool, yes. If I'm not all the way now, incapacitated. If so, he has his knife. It's pointing at me. Hopefully, it's not moving towards me. But if it's pointing at me, and I'm gonna hit his head. That that doesn't make no <laughs> sense. I'm gonna get stabbed up. Definitely, if he's moving at me, one you get off the line. You get off the line. You get off the line, and you crack him. Okay. Now this is using the sword analog, so you would crack him. Boom. You know, you move in close, you could crack him with the palm on his hand. You can crack his collarbone there, right? Or you could hit him here. Boom, bang, crack his knee. So you hit that hand first. If you see he's weakening, like oh, and weakening his grip, you could crack that knee and come back to that hand. You crack the knee so he can't follow you. Because once you knock that, crack that hand again, if you break his hand, he drops that tool, he may have another, but you're gone now. His knee is, is damaged. He's not going to be running after you, okay? That's one way. And if you're hitting with the stick low, you hit to the knee or below. Do not hit above the knee because that's the thigh, and that's a huge muscle, and you're just going to piss him off. Okay. You're not going to cripple him by hitting him in his thigh unless you have a hammer or something like that. We dealt with the attacking the legs in, in the kicking video. Okay. Now, hmm. Ain't that something? Yeah. I cracked you in the hand. You can't close your <laughs> his hand. So, so messed up, he can't even close it. All right. So we're going to do, I'm going to do angle two, angle three. Okay. Then I give it over to y'all. So I'm going to hit him in his hand with an angle two. So for us, as a matter of fact, let me start off here. Uh, the 15 strikes, I won't do the, the 15. I'm just going to do the common strikes. So it's 15 ways or directions you can hit a person. You know, in the Filipino arts, a lot of them say 12 or whatever, right? But five major, it's two. That's a three. Okay. Two, three. That's the angle four. That's the angle five. And then the angle eight. It could be eight like this or whatever. With the slick stick that you'll see, angle tens are uh, the order of the day for thrust. But you say one, two bars, one, one will be common too. One is not common. No, nope. Most people don't strike completely straight down. Mm. We do. Oh, right, right. It's That's not common. Okay. Most people, they, <laughs> you know, they swing, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of times they're not even like this. This is the most common, these two. Yeah, the two and the three. The forehand and the backhand, okay? So, whenever you hold a, a stick, too, make sure your hand is somewhere behind that stick, your other hand. Unless you're holding it on two ends, we're going to deal with it. Your hand has to be behind that stick so it doesn't get damaged itself. And so I, I, if he has a stick, he strikes at me with the stick, uh, with a number two, if you will. I stop that with a three. The reason why he has, he's a lefty. So he's using his left hand. I'm using my right hand. That's fine. That shouldn't make a difference. He strikes. I strike, and then once I block that off, whatever kind of way I'm going to block, then I can use the pommel, right? Um, two, three. I can keep it that simple. He strikes. I go three, and then I can go two if I wanted to hit him in his collarbone. Okay. Or I can go three, and then I can slide down, hit that thumb. See how he reacted? I go here, I slide down, hit his thumb. Once he reacts to that, bang, boom, then I crack him. I crack him because I came back to control this again. I'm, I'm, I'm checking it, then I can turn that into an eight. I'm controlling his stick, and then I'm jamming my stick into his body. Move that off, boom, crack his knee. 
Now, if you deal with a knife, do not grab it like that. But <laughs> you, you can use the technique. Uh, you got a training knife. You just you can use real knife. I don't care. Just you be careful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be careful. Right. He's coming to succumb him. He's coming to slash with an angle two with that knife. Boom! I crack his hand. So he's coming. I move off. Boom! Hit his hand, his wrist. Actually, this is a knife now. So you don't just go here and he cuts again. I take control. Boom! Crack that thumb. Boom! Crack that thumb. Boom! Crack that thumb. Boom! Crack those fingers. And if he uses the other hand to try to hit, boom! I, I can put that up as a shield or just crack it. Pack right. Crack his collarbone. Boom! Back to that hand. I'm not giving that hand up. Crack his 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 uh elbow. Now he's gonna be snatching for dear life to get away. Don't snatch because you got the knife here. So that's why I'm hitting multiple times to that hand. That hand is what's dangerous to me right now. Most dangerous. Okay. He throw a, a whip kick. I'm not concerned about that right now. I'm concerned about this knife. Crack it. Crack it. Crack it. Right. I'm smashing his thumb. You really can't see, but I'm smashing his thumb with this stick over and over, over and over. Get in and smash it with the pommel. Pommel if, you, if, 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 if you're skilled enough, okay? But just use the stick if you're not. And don't worry about hitting it at the end. If you're hitting the middle from this close, it's fine. You can bring this to it too. Bah! For more power. Bang! Bang, okay? If you want, you can slam down. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to mess his knife up. You can slam down on this on, on this after you've hit his hand a couple of times and knock that out. Okay, move it up to the side, and I move that towards him. So if he's threatened by it, crack him across his elbow or crack him in his knee. Okay, and still holding on. So that's one thing you can do. That's that's using it as a sword analog. If I do it the slick stick way, he shouldn't really even get that. Close to me, why I gotta even do that? But yeah. so we're gonna work with the slick stick. Um, you all are gonna just work. We're gonna move Cody off first to show them, and I show you how to hold it first. You hold it like you hold a knife between these lines here. Don't put it in the middle of your palm. It's gonna get knocked out with enough force. You hold it in these these lines here. Put it in those lines. And then fold your hand over. It's like you do the knife. The stick would be like you do the knife, yes. The stick would be a little longer because you have a little bit of pommel here. And then you put it, you do the same on this side, then you fold your thumb. Okay. That's how you begin to hold the slick stick. Because the slick stick, both palms down, is going, I can strike left, I can strike right. So we're here, we're rolling. Our, our feet are just like you know how you just use your feet, switching stances. I'm switching stances. I'm switching stances. In Capoeira, they would say jinga, but we're not actually jinging. We're not jinging like that. We're just you know, sitting up, stepping. You can bring it up now. And then I made the side, I'm gonna hit you with that two with my right. Or I made the side, I'm gonna hit you with the watch out, watch your head. I'm gonna hit you with the two with my left. Okay. I made the side. I catch you with that three. Or I catch you with that three. Okay. The uh, five, the five, the four, the four. Depending on the hand. So if you have a stick. Let's work this first and move it, kind of like roll your hands. Boom, strike. You can strike with the same foot forward, or you can strike with the other foot forward, because you don't want them to know when the strike's coming. They see your feet, and they say, oh, he's about to strike because he moved forward. Now, they don't know what's going to happen. I bring my right foot forward, I strike with my left. I bring my right foot forward, I strike with my right. I bring my right foot forward, I strike the other way, the angle three. I bring my left foot forward, I strike with the angle three. I 
Then my right foot forward, I strike with an angle three with my left. So they won't know. This is why we're calling it slick. We're going to be real smart with it. So they're going to work. So just work angle two. And then angle two, you'll see them roll, put in the other hand. Angle two, roll. That's called a roll over. You can angle two, roll under. Angle two, roll under. Whatever you come to with or if you're being slick. So let's say I hit him with an angle two. And he blocks. So I hit him, he blocks. I roll under. Mm. Crack him, okay? So angle two, I roll under, I crack him. Or... Angle, angle, angle. I hit him with an angle two. He blocks. I roll over. And really, that's a under and then over. We ain't gonna get too deep into that. But so you can be real smart with this stick. He hits. I can just come up, crack him on this side with that. Crack him on that side. Boom. For us, that's an angle nine. Okay. Hit. Oh, crack him. Crack him with the stick or with my fist. Boom. And then change over to the three here, to the collarbone. Fast. Or three to his hand. Fast okay. and All right. So that's us being, you know, a little slick. You know, I'm not a very intelligent dude, uh, but I know, yeah. I, be, I know how to be slick with this slick with this little stick here, okay? So they're going to uh, do a little move, so make sure it's just one two at first and then one you can roll right they just that that's just angle two and y'all can follow along so one catch two catch if you got a broken broom stick be careful you don't get splinters you got a stick okay so you bang right bang then you come you come again wang right bang. That's one, two, and then you're in. So, one, and I can go much faster. I don't want to hit this computer, and I got to answer to my wife. So, it's one, two, okay? If you're missing it, just practice. You ain't going to be perfect on the first day. Shit, I've been doing it. It'll be 50 years for me next month. I meant to bring that up. And 50 years of training coming up. And I'm not perfect, okay? Go ahead and work. Uh, that's Sankare uh, African Society. If that's the brother Denzel, he also said I'm proud of you. That's not. Oh, that's not Denzel. That's that's oh, Kamara. Thank you, brother. Oh. Uh, that's uh, brother Kamara from Chicago. Uh, originally, <laughs> then he was down here. He yes, back he in is Chicago. lying. You, you caught it. He is very intelligent. Don't let him fool you. So, uh, someone stop lying, brother. Don't be smart. <laughs> hey, yeah. I, 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 I'm trying to be. <laughs> yeah, 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 it worked. So, yeah, uh, just like he was saying, you just want to get a, get a good roll going, get your footwork. Uh, it, it may not come to you all at once. It's something that you're going to like, like everything, you're going to have to train. And like you said, it doesn't matter what hand you is because you have to learn to use both. And that's what's so good about it. You never know where is it coming from. So, wow, that's the two from that, from this hand. A two again. Come back. So two from the left. Two from the left. I don't know if you want us to get into the. No, no, no. Okay, no. okay. Just keep it simple. <laughs> so, keep it simple. so and and even though it's still deceptive, like again, the three from the inside. Three from now, the let inside. Me make, let me make a quick note. What he's talking about is there are different twirls. Okay, so you can strike. I can go here. Yeah. Then I can move, hit you with the, I can grab it, hit you with the left, or I can hit you with the right, put it back, hit you with the right, put it on the left, right? I can take it from behind my back, hit you. So that's what he's talking about. We ain't getting there in, in those yeah. times. We're not, we're not going to get there right now. Come to class, you want that? Come to class. Yeah, come to class. That. We'll give it to you. <laughs> So, yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. And that's when I ended up falling in love with this. So, uh, yeah. So, again, we just twos and threes. Again, this is a, a two and this is a three. 
It's like you said. And a quick thing on why we why we twirling. You're not twirling because it's beautiful, because it looks nice. And another thing, when you are twirling, you don't want to have your hand all doing it all with your thumb like you see those folks doing on on a IG with the pose and stuff, because you can easily <laughs> lose your tune. Right. You want to get your flexible wrist. I don't have the most flexible wrist, but you want a flexible wrist when you twirl. You want to keep it closed hand when you twirl. We do that because, Bob, what? Oh, we twirl because it throws off the mind. It, it distracts you. It's just it's just science. For some reason, when you twirl, when you that's why if you remember back in the days you do like you ain't know why you did all that. It was because subconsciously that's what the mind the, the, the mind the is humans are attracted to circles. Exactly. It's simple so, as plain. That's so why I said humans attract to circles, right? And folks, y'all know that y'all y'all see a very circular system, <laughs> and you lose your mind. <laughs> uh, because you're distracted by the circles. Well, the same thing. Well, you see, uh, what's his name? Sugar Ray Leonard. He box, and then he go. Uh, right, they right, can't right. see my hand, but he he go like, and then hit you with that hand. Well, people think that's being fun. No, that he's distracting you. You're distracted by the circles. He knew the science. He knew the science, right? You, you know, we always. We're tapping to the science, even if we don't know the scientific words. Right, right, right. But the right. scientific words mean nothing if you don't know how to apply it. Okay. So he knew how to apply it. Instinctive. Yes. So you're, you're attracting them to the circles. Then you hit, twirl, right? Hit, twirl. Boom. And yes, you don't open your hand, that Instagram hand, to make it like you, you're real quick. That's not quick. You better be flexible because somebody does that and opens their hand, boom, I'm going for that. You attack the hand anyway, boom, I'm going for it. It'll fly right out of their hand because they don't have a grip truly on that stick. Watch any stick fighter from any culture, and they're not opening their hand at all. They may twirl, but they're not opening their hands up. They're getting those wrists flexible, okay? Which is, this is a good way to, to work on that. They'll get the flexibility. So again, right. just... And you gotta twirl slow, twirl slow. Whatever you gotta do. If your work, if your wrist hurts, don't twirl, just hit, pass to the other. You got arthritis or whatever, hit, pass it to the other hand. Don't don't worry about twirling your wrist. You got arthritis, stop eating all that cheese and ice cream. Mm, yeah, that's too. Water. Back to that. Back to fruits. Try to keep try to keep the roll going. Or try to keep your once you get acclimated to it. Try to keep the footwork going as you swing. So you, so you swing, back, keep the footwork. Two. Oh, excuse me. I naturally want to tuck it because that's what I train to do. So again, two. Back to the hand. To clarify, angle two. Angle two is a forehand that strikes diagonally down. It doesn't mean what, at what height, because it can be to the neck, it can be to the head, it can be to the neck, it can be to the collarbone, the shoulder, the elbow, the hand, the knees. I have to get low to hit the knees with a two. You're shorter. Yeah. Or right, you're short, you, you may even hit the hip wheel. So that's a two. Three is the back hand downward diagonal. Okay? And it can go anywhere, it doesn't matter. So, if you want to train also hitting, you with a partner, you can hit their stick. Just don't do that until you control their stick. You don't want to slide and hit the hand. Got the ball, you don't want your daughter holding, and you hit, ah, hit her hand. Your wife will be mad as hell at you. Mm -hmm. So, make sure you got control first. Boom, hit. Two ways also to apply a hit. One is to go through. The other one is to rebound off. That's a hack. That's a hack. That's a slash, okay? So you can slash, don't hold too tight, I'm gonna break the shit out of it, okay? You can hack it or you slash. I've been known to break sticks with a stick, not <laughs> trying to. So boom, heavy hand. boom, 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 okay? Hack, slash. And he's holding the kind of hack, stick you want to slash. have. And see this one's thicker, look at the, the difference. I don't know if y'all can see the, 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 the width of that and then this. You see it. You see, you see it. it. You see it. It's thicker. This is a thicker stick. 
this is actually my stick, but Bile somehow <laughs> co-opted my stick and, 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 and kept my stick. Uh, it's red and black in honor of a shoe. Okay. What is, uh, Whose colors are red, white, and black, by the way. Yes. Uh, uh, now I was just going to say something. Like maybe come back to me when you're saying. Uh... Oh, oh. Um, I just want to say that's one, that's one of the things that makes African martial arts so great is the simplicity of it instead of um like you said the angle is just the angle you study the angles of the attack instead of every attack that way you don't have to worry about what type of attack it is you just deal with the angle that is coming on and that simplifies what you have to train for and how you train yeah if somebody said i'm gonna hit you with this uh <laughs> with this uh red hand that's just a number two right and that's all you have to worry about. Well, somebody, I'm going to slap you in your face. They're more than likely doing a number 12. And they may be doing a number two if they're taller right. coming down. You handle it the same way. You can use your hand. You can use a stick. You can use a knife, a sword. You handle it the same way. Because there's a million ways to deliver on those angles. But there's, like I said, there's only a certain amount of angles. Right. So you can't focus on a million different ways, though. This is it's the same thing. This is a number two right here. If I throw the elbow, but you can't, you don't worry well, about like, it. We don't care what your art is. We're doing the angles. Right. You are composed of angles if, if you're in combat. There are angles that come. The only time there's a difference, and really not a difference, when you really, really know, is when you're using firearms. Mm. But with firearms, most times, firearm is attacking you with the angle eight. Eight. Don't try to block it. Don't try to block the bullet <laughs> well, or, the, or, the, or the barrel most of the time. Uh, don't try to block it, but you do get off the line. They deal with an eight unless you curve the bullet. Well, yeah, if, if, if you, you uh, curve the bullet. You, you know, he's one of those, uh, yeah, that move. I forget that move where he was shooting it. <laughs> curve. If, if that's the case, you're going to lose from that dude. That dude anyway. <laughs> he can carry bullets. He can yeah, fight like a mug. Yeah. Yeah, so. Just don't stand straight in front of him when he tells you you're going to curve it around. You don't believe that. Don't believe that. Right. But yeah, so the motion, like you said, is, 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 is looks Jenga-ish, but it's not exactly that. And if you don't know Jenga, that's that's the movements from Capoeira. Everybody yes. knows that. My brother's on here. He's he's, he's saying, oh, that's what they're trying to, they're trying to copy my, <laughs> trying to copy my style. No, brother, we are not. But uh, yeah, and actually, uh, if I'm correct, Barbara, you would be moving forward slightly each step is yeah that... no so you never move backwards well, we never do so that. don't don't take your step backwards now you do not... <laughs> don't do that now you tap that so I'm <laughs> right it's always <laughs> forward roger, roger rabbit yeah the, <laughs> the running man is up. uh don't do that right make sure your energy is forward even when you attack don't now, this is definitely where we and the Filipino arts certainly differ because they will take a, a back step and hit. If they take a back, you didn't so you can see what I'm doing. If, uh, you can bring that down some. They will take it, but they need to see me up top too. It's weird. So, if you get back a little bit, they got you. They'll take a, there we go. in Filipino arts, a lot of times they will take a back step, so especially if you strike low and hit. Now, we can, it's a modified lion step, but it's preferable if they're attacking low, you come forward. It's the same movement. Mm. So come over. If he attacks low, attack with this hand uh, so they can see uh, low number uh, seven. Okay. So he's attacking with the seven. That's, that's the angle seven for us. He attacks. A lot of uh, Filipinos, a lot of times, would do that. Mm. I'm sure they do the other one too, but we most of the time will step forward. I'm in the same position, but I step forward. The reason why, by stepping forward, when I come over, boom, to hit his hand, I move, I'm right behind him. Yeah, my bad. We try our best to take our opponent's back because the Yoruba say, you give a man or a woman, you give your opponent your back, you, you become an ancestor. ancestor. And you know, to be an ancestor, you got to leave this plane. This upper room. Right. You mean in the upper room. Okay. <laughs> so 
with all the other mugs who <laughs> who got their backs taken. <laughs> so you're trying to take his back. Taking the back is the person's here. I take one step. I take another step, and I'm I'm on the side, right? I crack him. And I push his hand out of the way. I got his back. I just love to see him move. Man. So from here, he hits. I take one step, right? I take another step. I have pretty to much adjust. got his back. I got and then adjust. I slap that hand, and I've got his back. And now he gonna pay real bad. So now I'm gonna crack that elbow bone, right? I'm gonna crack his uh, shoulder blade now. And uh, I've had that happen. Not shoulder blade, the collar. It's as bad, boys. Bad. You don't want that type of pain. Yes, uh, Rich Melanin, you do need to train. We all need to train. Uh, Peace to Spider Man 7285. Sugar Booker said she tried to go downstairs and get a stick, and her husband asked for food. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's how it goes. You know? That's when you take the stick, say, Pow, no! Get it yourself. Sure. My wife was coming downstairs and had had a looking for a stick. What you looking for, babe? A stick. Oh, yeah. Can you fix me a sandwich? You know, <laughs> hey, same thing. Um, but she said, I'm looking for but I'm looking for a stick to train. I'm, oh. Excited. Now we're training. You know, get eaten. Um, you can learn these angles. Peace, on, everybody. If, you, if you're not in Atlanta, man. you can tune in on Zoom with the African Martial Arts Institute. We can still give you those angles. You can still get them from, from there to see what they are. I wonder, are you left more vulnerable taking a swing and missing or not attacking until you know you're going to land it? You never at attack, Jerm. Uh, that's a good question. You never wait until you know you're going to hit because you don't know. You know There are many variables. You know, you're not, this dude not a statue. I'm just crack him, I'm I'm gonna crack him in his jaw. I'm going to swing it in free. Right now. <laughs> it ain't happening like that, like that. So he swings. I defend myself. Am I open now? No, because this is built in. This is why the hand is behind the, 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 the tool. But I put my hand up, right? And then I use it. I can either grab, I can pass this out the way, I can slap it out the way, I slap, I hit. So the stick now is in the way of his hand and his neck. The, the techniques are built to defend you while you're working. But that hand, as long as your integrity of your hand is behind that, that tool or moving to grab and then it comes back behind the tool, you'll be all right because that's defending your neck. It can defend you. Your mid body, you can defend your lower body if you had to, but I would use the, the tool to defend me first. Another and this is thing. as the grab. Okay. Another great thing about after martial arts, there's no finite move. So you're not stuck when I swung at him and he and did or he blocked it. His hand right here is not supposed to do this or supposed to do that or supposed it's supposed to do whatever yeah. it needs to do. Right. And so it's gonna be where it needs to be, too. You say, how is it from the training? train and it, it comes uh one we don't have forms and you know i know a lot of us have forms that's that's cool but forms cauterize you in a what form exactly so it does not let you be free but the, the african seeks to be free improvisational now that does not mean you're not training for situations right. improvisational means I've trained the same way when you play the piano, you learn the scales, right? And you, you learn to play certain songs. Then you can start improvising as you begin to master this piano, at master the keys, right? So the same thing, you're learning techniques, okay? And then you start improvising pretty early on, right? But it's not just grab assing or flopping around. You're actually improvising with skill and knowledge okay you have the knowledge of the science of, of how the body works not just how your opponent's body works how yours works which is more important you have the knowledge of the angles you have the knowledge of what this tool does and does not do and then all of that is not compartmentalized when i'm thinking of it in numbers like that even when we deal with the angles, person just working. I say, what angle is that? For them, they're teachers. They have to know 
they're instructors. They have to know what that angle is. But that's on the fly. I'll do it while, while they're working with somebody. Okay, what angle is that? What angle did you hit, hit them with? And they, they should be able to answer that while defending themselves. Because there's going to be so much stuff going on around you. And you can train. And once you get this down, then, like Sugar Booger, you're, you're doing this. And then you say, uh, you know, tell your husband to, to start asking you questions. And you answer those questions while you're doing that same thing. Okay. And you real master like Bobby, you can fix a sandwich while using it. At the same right. Time. Well, I fix a sandwich, drive my car, watch a movie, and do this at the same time. That's nice when you're talking, you know, because I've been training a lot of that. No. So, um, you know, just, just push yourself because you're pushing your mind. Your mind is the ori, we call it. It is the most important thing you have. When you're talking about your guardian angel, your mind, that, that, that's it. Um, you hear us say, you know, you're a god. That didn't just that didn't start with the nation of Islam saying you're a god, by the way. Um, that's part of Ifa. We say you're a god, so you're a god, not the creator. That would be ridiculous, but you are a god, meaning you can access and use force and power. Okay, and this is what you're doing. Don't tell me, I just can't swing this stick hard enough. Sure you can. You, you tell me you mean physically? Then there are adjustments that have to be made so you can swing with enough power. I've shown people from a wheelchair what you can do to swing. Never just give up on yourself. Can you swing as hard as me? Right? No, not right now. But eventually... Or maybe you never swing as hard, but you swing enough to protect yourself. That's what you deal with. Don't, don't worry about what the next person is doing. Like I tell you, don't worry about the next person. Worry about defending yourself. I don't even care what my opponent knows. I don't care if it's Hulk Hogan. Like I've said before, people say, what would you do if you fought Hulk Hogan? He'd be whole Hogan. Because he'd be so full of holes, he'd look like Swiss cheese. Don't worry about that. Worry about you. How your body moves. So the first thing you have to do is, in a violent encounter, control yourself. Second thing is you control your opponent. Then you control the situation. But the first thing is control of yourself. Okay? All right, they're about to get back to it. So now add the so one, two, and then add the threes to it. So do, no, two, two I'm talking about. Three, three. Right. So, so now they're gonna add the three to it. So, so they're gonna that's the two again coming around like that. No matter which hand I use, the same angle, I go slow boom. And the three is like you said from the inside. So the three I'll turn a little slower. The three is that way. I'll twirl back. My other hand will come in, twirl back. All right. So then we're gonna do two, three. All right, I go three, two. And you can go all the way in motion. So I can go two, three, twirl. That almost look a little one -ish, so I'll do it again. Two, three, back hand. I go from here, two, three, back. I caught Bob in the hand. Cody. Cody, excuse me, Cody. And Dan over there on the ground. We'll be <laughs> using him later on. But again, setting this, three, Two in this hand, three, two, three, Ooh, again in the hand, two. All right. You know why you did this hand? Because it's time to, to show <laughs> what doing. So, we're each going to take time to strike Cody's hand or move him from the window. I don't want the window getting broken. All right. And, uh, uh, you can go first on me, Ninja. Good. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to move it right now. No, we could. You said two, three. Which, whichever angle you want to hit. You can hit one, one out. So hit to his hand. That's, that's a, a key target. Not saying that. 
Got it, chips. That was not a that was a two there, right? Two. Yeah, that, that was that, that was an actual that was a three. If you didn't knock it out of it. All right, good. Be late. Right. So you're saying two threes. Is that simple? Two three. three. Right. Three, two. Three. Two. Oh, I want to tuck it. I want to tuck it when I come to that side. Oh, excuse me. I'm not even trying to swing that hard, I'm telling you. That's the stick for you. It's just a powerful thing. Three, two. Two, three. All right. A couple of actions. Ah. Ten. Ten. So you're striking with the ends now. Ten. Ten. That's why I say you need a little bit of pommel. That was a two, three, two, three, two, three, to the same hand, okay, three, two, so you can get a two, had to hit that next since you did it on the nigga. <laughs> <laughs> this is so, such a nice target. This is cool, but if you got a, a two, that may not stop you from getting stabbed up. That will. Okay. So just keep it simple. Two. Boom. Say two. Boom. Three. Boom. Three. Boom. I may want to hit three. It's the outside of the arm. Three. Boom. Okay. Then you want to add the, ten, the, the angle tens. We're going down. This hand will be doing 10, but it's one hand. I'm using two. 10. Other side. 10. Okay. Probably you think the be birthday collar going. It's not going to stop it. Not to stab you. Well. Or you can have to hit it. No, so it, 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 it will stop from stabbing you twice. Mm -hmm. But if I had this knife. Come on. And you know, don't really hit me, or I'm gonna have to really stab you. So, you know. so I'm trying to stab, and you're hitting to my collarbone. I'm already in motion. Oh, okay. That you're not gonna. I'll be. Oh shit! And you still gonna get hit somewhere. Even if you just and, go down. And right. And if this catch. touches you, it's gonna open. Now, if you you can still break his collarbone, but not first. So you hit his hand. Ah, boom! And then break his collarbone. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and then you can come back at that hand again in case he hasn't dropped it. All right, exactly. Grab or, or or not. So you can grab if you want to. But so I hit his hand. Bah! Right? And it's torn up. Oh! Then I boom, crack his collarbone. That also weakens the hand. And then I crack that hand again. I mean, I have to grab it. In fact, boom, crack it again. Oh, hit his leg and then start moving around him. I never had to grab him because he slowed down too. Because you don't want to have to grapple a knife unless you absolutely have to. Because you're going to be snatching and all that and you can get cut in the interim of, of defending yourself. Because a knife is no joke. You know, just accidental touch, you're open. When the great thing about the stick is the distance that you can have. Right. I can, I can have distance or I can be in with the, with the pommel. I can be close. Boom. And still crack him. From this hit with the pommel, crack him. Hit to his body with the with the pommel. Boom. Boom. Up. Then step out. Crack him. Okay. So it's a versatile, very versatile tool. That is the slick stick. Um, let's see if we have any questions. We don't. Make sure you practice. Train, train, train. Um, we're here on Thursdays uh, on Black Power Media on the Remix Morning Show. 
Uh, we come on at nine. Um, but the Remix Morning Show is from eight to ten. Uh, check out all our other shows, Jackie Luke Mon Show and uh, Luke Mon Nation. Um, Riot Starter TV, a lot of great shows here uh, on Black Power Media, and a lot more great ones to come. Uh, this is Word Class. We're every Saturday at one o'clock. Mash that like button, uh, share it with some friends, subscribe. and uh, subscribe if you have not subscribed. Uh, get share in with us, us on the social media platforms. And Please share this YouTube. You can always share YouTube's on on Facebook. So make sure you're sharing this with your with your group. Different yeah, groups and clip, clip it fans. and, and share clips on uh, Instagram. Send messages. All send, that stuff. send messages to folks. Hey, this is TikTok. All. I don't know how none of that works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do a TikTok with us on there. Uh, I want to address something Jeremy P said. He said it always helps when your attacker just stands there motionless. Certainly that would help, but you know the, <laughs> the fact is that we're training and that we're learning how to train these movements into our muscles. Yeah. So we, you know, in class we're not standing still. Right. Mm -hmm. One, one, we don't have room to move with the stick like we want on this on this video. Like like we, not like we want because we're doing what we want. Uh, we don't have room to do that. Number two, uh, yes, it's always good if you have a mannequin. I, I spoke about that person just standing there. Uh, that's not how we train and don't make assumptions. Come to class and then you'll see the difference. Okay, I'm a nicer guy than I, than I, I used to be because I, you know, one thing about being a fighter, a warrior, you can tell when somebody's throwing punches. Yeah, bro. Okay. So, you know, love y'all. Where can we get one of these sticks? You can order them online. eBay. Uh, yeah, look up a screamer oh, stick. Right. A screamer stick. Um, now, if any of you all can find hardwood sticks, let me know because I've been looking for a long time for some good hardwood sticks without just cutting up a tree myself <laughs> and doing it. I, you know, I'm not trying to do all that. Put it in the sun, <laughs> put it in, send, send us a message if you find those. Yeah, these are good to train again, like you said, but these aren't the ones you want to have out. You want that. Right. Or oh, you want some. Well, this is rattan too. Rattan is actually grass. I did not know that. Uh, yeah, it's actually grass. But if you can find. So that's a vegan stick right there. Vegan, exactly. You can find some white oak uh, or some mahogany or something like that. Let me know. Now, mahogany is going to be expensive. Uh, let me know. i buy one stick. <laughs> but. Um, if you can find all that coca bolo hardwood stuff like that, oh man, please. All oh, right, uh, Melon and Rich they also have them at the. I've been to martial arts stores and we and did a order on eBay, so they they have them at martial arts stores. They had them in yes. the back at the one I went to, so you gotta make sure you know what to ask for. Um, thank you, uh, Ulu Kata, for joining us, everybody. Um, really appreciate that. The screamer stage got it, yes, the screamer spill exact. Right way. I would check a local agency. Now I tell you, um, if Denzel Caldwell, if you're on here uh, and just watching, lurking, uh, add, tell us where because they use a harder stick. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I may message them and, and ask uh, because they may cut them from the trees. I don't know, uh, but let me know. I'm just I'm being lazy and just want to buy one myself. But if I had to cut from a tree, because we had a student that used to always bring in, he bring in whole logs. <laughs> um, he's a little different. We brought in whole logs to train with. But uh, so, you know, get yourself a stick, you know, and if it's, and even with the log, if it's too dry, it's going to crumble. Right. So, you know, all right. So appreciate y'all. I would check a local agent store here in Chicago by me. All right, Melanie Rich Nay. I'm from Chicago. Cool. Now, let me see. There used to be a store up on Broadway. I, I, I don't know if they still exist. Um, they may have it. Well, they would definitely have it. So I'm not sure. There's a couple of martial artists on here. They may who are from Chicago. They may be able to tell you. Let us know what you find. Yes. So thank you all. Uh, join us next week. We'll be doing backflips and tucks. Yeah, Bobby back. Will be a they, they will be doing that. <laughs> yeah, handspins and all of that. Um, so join us next week, one o'clock Eastern time. Love y'all. Stay black or whatever it is you are. Peace. Peace.
species. 